Hi, uh, my name is Lisa Pearl. I'm a professor at the University of California, Irvine, and I run the Computation of Language Laboratory there. And I'm so happy to be able to tell you uh, today about a new way to find developmentally meaningful variation in children's input, uh, a look at syntactic knowledge across socioeconomic status. And so to begin with, uh, there's lots of variation in children's input, lots of natural variation about uh, who's talking to them, how many people are talking to them, how much time they're getting talked to per day, uh, when they're getting talked to about certain topics, where they're getting talked to, uh, at, you know, what context. I mean, there's just all kinds of natural variation in children's input. Right? Every child has a unique experience in this sense. But developmentally meaningful variation is different. Developmentally meaningful variation is going to be variation that actually impacts language development in some substantial qualitative way. Right? And so meaningful input deficits, that is differences, in particular, you know, lack of some crucial information in the input, can lead to language delays, right? The, the delay of that language development, whatever type it might be. And in particular, if there's an input-based language delay, and we know what the crucial input deficit is, well, we can intervene and fix that deficit, right? So we can create impactful interventions if we know that there's an input-based language delay and we know what that crucial input deficit or difference actually is, right? Like that's why we care. And so one thing we know is that input-based language delays appear across socioeconomic status, SES, uh, moving forward, where lower SES children are often behind their higher SES peers when it comes to language development uh, in various aspects. For just as a couple of examples, uh, the development of vocabulary, like the, how many words they know, the quantity of words they know, uh, but also the, the types of words they know. Right, uh, tends to lag behind. And then even language processing ability, how quickly they can leverage language information from their input also seems to lag behind. These are just some examples of language delays that appear to be based on the types of input these children are getting. And so uh, we know that low SES language input can differ from high SES input in both overall quantity of speech, just how much you're hearing, right, but also the quality of that speech. So what, what do I mean by quality? Um, well, quality can be measured by different aspects of the input, like what part of the input you want to kind of zoom in on. Like, for example, uh, diversity of vocabulary. So if you're talking about uh, animal names, maybe uh, a low SES kid might hear, you know, penguin and kitty, but a high SES kid might hear a greater variety of vocabulary. So penguin and kitty, but also puppy and monkey and cat and whale and seal and birdie, right? Just more different types of words having to do with animals in this case. Uh, diversity of syntactic construction. So maybe while in one case we might have simple commands, simple imperatives or declaratives, right? Uh, for a different child from, let's say, a higher, higher SES background, you might have your imperatives and your declaratives but also WH exclamations, WH questions, yes, no questions, tag questions, just a greater variety of syntactic constructions. And say the frequency of decontextualized speech. So decontextualized speech is speech about things that aren't in the current context. That's what makes it decontextualized. So the current context is like the here and now, like what's happening right in front of you. And so decontextualized speech, very common types, are talking about, say, the past or the future, right? That those might be some types of decontextualized speech, but maybe modals, like what should be true, right? Uh, and maybe you just hear more of these sorts of what might be true, what should be true, what was happening in the past, what's happening in the future. Maybe you hear more of that. Uh, in higher SES child-directed speech than in lower SES child-directed speech. So this is, again, different zoom-ins on what, how you can measure, say, the quality or the nature of the input these different children are experiencing. So here's the question then. How can we tell if any particular input difference is developmentally meaningful? That is, it impacts language development. Like that's what it means to be develop developmentally, excuse me, developmentally meaningful because again, the reason we care about that is so that if we find something that's developmentally meaningful, then we can target that input difference, whatever it is, with an intervention and, and 
have an impact and fix whatever uh, language development delay, say, or difference might be occurring. So now let's talk about a standard way to detect developmentally meaningful differences. So first is to just notice that there's a difference. Okay, you know, this one does not equal that one in some way, right? And then measure language acquisition outcomes, like say, you know, the things kids say, or maybe the knowledge that they have in some way is based on other behaviors, like what they comprehend in certain situations, right? Different outcomes that you can measure, right? And then what you're doing is just seeing if that input difference correlates with any outcome differences, right? You're just sort of saying, well, they must be related if, they, if we see this correlation. Now note, um, this means that the input difference might cause the output difference and so be meaningful. But at the end of the day, it's correlational. So we don't know that for sure. We just know that they are related, right? If you find a correlation, but that is a sort of standard way to look is at least know that there's a correlation between whatever input difference and whatever outcome difference, right? Now, what I want to talk about today is a new complementary way uh, to try to find these developmentally meaningful differences that uses developmental computational model. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. A developmental computational model implements a specific learning theory. That's what it does. It makes concrete a specific learning theory. And that learning theory is going to be about how children use their input to do what? Well, to acquire the knowledge that they use to generate their output, right? It's a causal story. It's a theory about how that input leads to the knowledge that generates the output, right? That's what we're implementing in our developmental computational model. So this means that the learning theory that's implemented by the model specifies what aspect of the input matters and how exactly it matters, how you use that input to generate that output, to acquire the knowledge to generate that output. And so if we know what input part matters, we can target that part for intervention if needed, right? Like that's, again, sort of the practical reason why we care about this. Now, a developmental computational model uh, is going to predict the language outcome on the basis of that input, right? So if the predicted outcomes differ, then it's because the input difference caused that outcome difference. This is a causal story again. So the input difference is predicted to be meaningful, right? If we see predicted outcomes that differ, right? Now, of course, these outcome predictions will need to be verified, but you're predicting that this is a meaningful difference because you're predicting there's an outcome difference. And bonus, of course, is because the learning theory in the model is causal, we can predict if the input should cause similar outcomes too, right? If that's the case, if we get similar outcomes, then even if we observe some kind of input difference, it's not developmentally meaningful, right? It doesn't impact the outcome of development, right? So today then, this is what I, I'm really interested in, is detecting developmentally meaningful input differences. And again, we have sort of the standard way, which is a correlational story, and a new complementary way, which is a, a causal story of how that input uh, generates the output and predicts whether you're gonna see outcome differences or not. And as you can imagine, uh, we're going to focus on the new complementary way to detect these developmentally meaningful input differences. And in particular, uh, use them on a case study of syntactic island acquisition, right? Uh, why, you might wonder. And it's because syntactic islands are higher order syntactic knowledge. And, and it's a kind of knowledge where we don't know much, actually, about developmentally meaningful input differences across socioeconomic status. So we can use this complementary way, this developmental computational model way, of investigating if there are developmentally meaningful input differences for the acquisition of syntactic island knowledge.